Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating a sum of powers of i. We've done powers before but this sum is a little different. Notice that all the powers of mult all the powers are multiples of 3. We have i to the power 0 plus i to the power 3 plus i to the power 6 all the way up to i to the power 99. And I just wanted to give you one of the biggest hints that you can get with complex numbers, i squared equals negative 1. If there's one thing that you must know before you do anything, that will be this one. Great. So let's see how we can solve this problem in two different ways. First method. So for my first method, I want to use the sum of geometric series. This is a finite geometric series. Now think about it. This is 1 plus i cubed plus i to the 6 plus i to the 9th, and it goes all the way up to i to the power 99. And the first one is i to the power 0, or just 1. 1 is fine. Now notice that we can write i to the 6 as i cubed squared. We can write the i to the 9th as i cubed to the 3rd power. And finally, i to the 99th power can be written as i cubed to the power 33. So notice that this is actually a geometric series with common ratio i cubed instead of i. So we can kind of consider the following. Remember, if you have a finite geometric series, you can always find the sum because it's finite, right? If it's infinite, it's a different story. r needs to be between negative 1 and 1, so on and so forth. Now, this is equivalent to what? Let's think about it. There were two versions of this. Let's use the one that starts with 1 minus. So you're going to take 1 minus, look, you look at the la last power and just increase the power by 1. That's going to be r to the power 34 and just divide by 1 minus r. Of course, this is true if the first term is 1. If not, then you're going to multiply this by r or whatever the first term is. Make sense? So by using this formula, by the way, I didn't give you the general formula. I gave you the specific version for um, n equals 33. So if you apply it to this, to our sum, let's just put that, 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 same sum from here. It doesn't mean it's infinite, it's, I just wanted to write this much. It's going to be 1 minus, since r is i cubed, you have to replace r with i cubed, right? Be careful not with i. So we're going to write 1 minus i cubed to the power 34 divided by 1 minus i cubed. And then we got to simplify this. How do you simplify it? Well, if you know what i cubed is, the rest should be pretty easy. But remember, we talked about the first four powers. i to the power 1 is i. i to the second is negative 1 by definition. Remember, that was our hint. i to the third is the product of these two numbers, which is negative i. And then finally, i to the fourth is i squared squared, which is positive 1. This is where the cycle begins. And then i to the fifth is going to be the same as i to the first. So it's mod 4, in other words. But this one... You can think of it this way. Either you can just multiply 3 times 34 and evaluate the power, or you just replace i cubed with negative i. Now this is an even number, so it's not going to matter. It's still going to be 1 minus i to the power 34 divided by 1 minus i cubed. i cubed is negative i, so we can write this as 1 plus i. Now what about 34? Think about i to the power 34 in mod 4 i to the 34 is basically i to the power 32 times i to the second. Because i to the power 32 is i to the fourth to the eighth. And since this is 1, this is always going to be 1. So don't worry about it. And i squared is negative 1. So i to the power 34 is also going to be negative 1. So all you have to do is look at the exponent from a mod 4 perspective. In other words, divide the exponent by 4 and then look at the remainder. That's going to be your power. So i to the 34 is negative 1, so this is 1 minus negative 1, be careful with the minus sign here, divide by 1 plus i, and that is the same thing as 2 over 1 plus i. We're not done yet because we still have to get rid of the i at the bottom or the denominator, multiply by 1 minus i, top and bottom, and now when you multiply, the top gives you 2 minus 2i, and at the bottom you get sum of two squares, remember that formula, the product of z and z bar is always a real number. And if you don't know, if you're not familiar with these, go ahead and check out the lecture videos. And this becomes a 2 then, 
and the answer is 1 minus i. That will be the answer. And this is the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And let me know which one you like better. And of course, we can also talk about a, a third method, and I'm pretty sure you'll find other ways to do this. Maybe I can briefly mention if I don't forget. So now, the second method is just going to depend on individual powers. We're not going to use any series. Basically, we're going to use powers. So i to the third power is negative i, remember that? So I'm going to need a couple more maybe just to get the pattern. 1 is 1. i to the third is negative i. i to the sixth is the same thing as i squared because when you divide 6 by 4, you get the remainder of 2. So that's going to be negative 1. And i to the ninth power is the same as i because 9 leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 4. So that's going to be a positive i. Notice that just like with powers of i, and I think this happens because 3 and 4 are relatively prime, correct me if I'm wrong, but they just cancel like normal. If you were adding 1 plus i squared plus i cubed plus i to the fourth, the exact same thing would happen, right? So we have a cycle or some type of cyclic structure, matter which uh, part of this expression you use because you're going to get the same answer. Anyways, so this is going to continue. And then notice that we have, do we have 100 terms? No. Be careful because these are multiples of 3. So it's kind of like this. We have 3 times 0, 3 times 1, all the way up to 3 times 33. And you'll probably remember from the first method that we have 34 terms. And we end up with two remaining terms. Two terms will remain at the end, but should I check them at the end? No, you don't need to because it's not going to matter. So all we have to do is cancel everything except for the first two terms, and you are good to go. And notice that these two answers are the same. Should that be a surprise? No, not at all, because you're supposed to get the same answer, no matter what you do, right? If you did it correctly, of course. Oops. To the end of this video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.